105 Network. This is Open Line. Happy Monday, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for tonight's Open Line. It is Beyond the News, my favorite Monday of the month. And my special guest this time, none other than JB, John <laughs> Burton. Thank you for being here, friend. Well, I mean, come on, let's cut through it. First of all, <laughs> Carrie, folks, for those that don't know, I'm, I'm wrapped around Carrie's finger. She said, hey, I need you to come on the show. And I said, I'll do anything for you. And so here I am. But I wanted to be here. His day off. I, I wanted to be here because I think this is great what uh, News Channel 5 and News Channel 5 Plus does, giving us a chance to kind of let the viewers yeah. in on, on our lives outside of TV. So I'm right. very excited to be here. And I'm very excited to be hanging out with you for an hour. You know you're my Thank favorite. You. you say that to all the ladies. Only the ones I like. <laughs> <laughs> and we like you just back. I love that you wore pink. Well, thank you. Yeah, real men wear pink. Everybody knows All the that. Time. It's normally for me. Uh, I usually wear pink on Mother's Day. Yes. And I usually wear pink on Easter Sunday. But I thought, you know, why not? Why not? So I broke it out today. So ho hopefully, folks at home like it. You look good. Thanks. Now, I want to do a reminder, everybody. This is still open line. You can call in, ask questions of John. <laughs> You can ask him about, you know, what's he doing in his free time? Mm -hmm. What sports teams does he really like that he doesn't divulge very often? I will. Uh, will you, you know, say you? you do I, I, I'm very a open bit. about that. Yes. I'm a New Yorker. Okay, yeah. so listen, I'm a Yankee fan. I'm a New York Giants fan. Even though you know I love covering the Titans and yeah. I want to see them do well, but you know it's it's in your blood. Right. I'm a Knicks fan. They're terrible, but I'm hopeful. <laughs> you know they they are. I grew up just outside of Syracuse. So I was a Syracuse basketball uh, fan. They were terrible in the tournament. They lost to Baylor in the first round. So my teams have been struggling lately. I mean, you know, you look at the Yankees. They won 100 games last year, and they still finished eight games out of first and lost to the playoffs to those darn Boston Red Sox. So, um, mm. so yeah, I'm very open about, about the teams that I, I root for. I like that, though, because it's transparent. Because, right. you know what, we all have our favorites, exactly. right? Right. So just That's how I got into sports it. in the first place, really? tell was me about loving that. teams. Well, listen, I grew up in upstate New York, and... Um, you know, I ended up watching a lot of Yankees games, mm -hmm. and I ended up watching a lot of New York Giants games. And what happened was, not only did I love the sports and the teams that I liked, I also liked the guys that talked about the sports. Yeah. I also liked the commentators, guys like, you know, Brett Musburger, Howard Cosell, um, you know, Bob Costas, who went to Syracuse University. I didn't go to Syracuse, by the way. A lot of people think I went there, but I didn't. You were always talking with Rory about it, because he did yeah, go there. He did, yeah, it. Rory Johnston yeah. went there. I, yeah. you know. Couldn't afford it, but mm -hmm. hey, I you know okay. went to, went to went to community college to small state school route. But I always, you know, grew up rooting for the orange. But I found that just just as much as I like watching sports, mm -hmm. I like listening to the guys talk about the sports. And so now, would you like turn down the TV and do your own play-by-play? -play? No, you yeah. know, I, I I actually did that once. I was with some buddies, and we were um, we were watching the 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 we were pretty young. We we're watching the football playoffs up at the Carrier Dome. And I was with some buddies, and I ended up starting commentating the game. Yeah. And they got the biggest kick out of it. And as a matter of fact, like to this day, <laughs> they'll say, "Remember that time we were at the <laughs> we were at the you know the Rome Free Academy football game, yeah. and you were commentating the game, and it was just I fell in love with it. I was like, I have to do this. That's amazing. Hey, guess what? We're have a phone call. Oh my goodness. Gotta go to the line. Who's on the line? Dan is on the line. Dan, thank you for calling in. Hello. Hey, Dan. Hey, go what's ahead. up? Hey, how you guys doing tonight? Good, good. what's how happening? Are you? John, I'm fine. John, this is kind of corny, but I laughed for three days. You remember when you went to Buffalo and done that... Uh, I was eating the chicken wings? Went up <laughs> ...and you was in there eating ribs or something, and you looked like you sure was having a good time. Yeah, I was eating the chicken wings. You know what? I used to live in Buffalo. Yeah, I told my wife, I said, look at this. That's right here. Why can't we do this? She said, first... You're not in Buffalo. <laughs> I just wanted to say you do a good job. I really enjoy your uh, portions, even though they rush the sports guys sometimes. Uh -huh. I just want to say keep hanging Don't in get me started. Good evening, sir. <laughs> Uh, I appreciate you, that. Appreciate yeah, that, that was actually uh, the Titans played at Buffalo yeah. against the Bills. And I thought it'd be a cool thing. I used to live in Buffalo. Right. And I grew up three hours east of there. So I lived there for four years. So I told um, our photographer and our uh, our executive producer, Brian McKeegan, I said, hey, wouldn't it be cool 
if I did something inside the Anchor Bar with chicken wings. Everybody knows that right. you know Buffalo's Buffalo is known for right. the incredible chicken wings. That's what I grew up on. So I did this thing where I was sitting at a table and I had a big thing of wings. I took a bite out of it. And so the Anchor Bar is the home of the original chicken wing. And you have said before, because we've talked about this in the commercial breaks, how you make a real chicken wing. Right. It's different in Buffalo than what most folks are used to. The sauce has to be cooked in. So what happens is you cook the wing, you take it out of the fryer, uh -huh. you put it you, you put it back, in, you know, you put some sauce on it, okay. then you put it back in the fryer mm. so it's extra crispy. Okay. It's got to be with well the done sauce on, with yes. the sauce on it. Yes, and the sauce has to be cooked in. You don't slather uh, right. sauce on chicken wings. You After have to the fact. cook it in. Yeah. yeah. So it was good to get back home to my home region, upstate New York, and have some good wings and just have a little fun on TV. So obviously, it was memorable. Okay. <laughs> somebody, <I'm glad laughs> somebody remembered it. <laughs> Scott is on the line. Scott, thank you for being part of Open Line tonight. You got a question for John? Hey, yeah, I sure do. First of all, John, I just wanted to tell you when you were filling in on the zone, on the wake up zone, you were great. So oh, thank you. Anytime, anytime you want to come on the radio, uh, I'd love to hear you. But I wanted to ask you a simple question. You report the sports every every night to us and let us see stuff on, on the sports cast. But mm -hmm. in person, what is the greatest sports moment you've witnessed? as a fan and I like to hear that and thanks a lot for all you do man. Sure yeah, yeah absolutely. I wrote that down to him like what's the pinch me moment where you're like I can't believe I'm here. Oh man you know I've had such good fortune Carrie to be able to cover some of the biggest sporting events in mm -hmm. the world. You know I've covered the final four um, I've covered two Super Bowls, three Super Bowls actually. I just covered my third Super Bowl. You know, I've covered the Major League Baseball All Star Game. I've covered, you know, the the the, the NHL Stanley Cup Finals. I've, I've covered a couple of those. Um, you know what? I'd have to say probably the 2006 MLB All Star Game in Pittsburgh. Really? Being on the field as the best baseball players in the world were taking batting practice, and there were celebrities. Like I interviewed Alyssa Milano. I interviewed Ooh, cool. Johnny Bench. Yeah. I I kind of did what you're not supposed to do as a media guy. I had my picture taken with Derek Jeter. Oh, it wasn't my idea. Yeah, I was coaxed into it, but you know, I'm a, I'm a Yankee fan. I'm yeah. a Jeter fan. Being there, that was kind of like, wow, this is incredible. Because, you know, the Major League Baseball All-Star Game, I know there are bigger sporting events, but this was, you know, I interviewed Chris Berman from ESPN, who's one of my idols growing up, you know. It's amazing just because there were just so many baseball greats past and present there. Mm -hmm. There were actors. There were all kinds of people there and everybody was just kind of milling around having a good time and you know I was living in Pittsburgh at the time so I felt a lot of civic pride sure that they all came to Pittsburgh even though the Pirates were terrible but the the ballpark's beautiful you got to go folks if you're ever in Pittsburgh you got to go to PNC Park it's the most beautiful ballpark you'll ever see in your life and that was probably because um, I was you know I was a younger man back then and I kind of <laughs> thought wow this is kind of cool yeah and I just I was still in the auditioning phase to be the top sports guy because the top sports guy moved to news and they were auditioning me mm -hmm. you know you so know it was a big you know, moment yeah. oh yeah, yeah. You're right. so Got I had to pressure. yeah it was a big it was a big yeah. it was a big thing so I had to come through and sure. I had to be able to um, deliver and uh, I thought I did a pretty good job and I, I, that was probably the pinch me no pinch me moment but yeah I mean I've I've been, uh, and the other moment was probably growing up being a Syracuse fan and getting to cover Syracuse in the Final Four in 1996. Oh, that'd be nice. Yeah. They didn't win. They lost to Kentucky, but uh, they got to the championship game, and that was a lot of fun. So I, like I said, I've been very, very lucky and very blessed because, uh, you know, there are, there aren't too many big sporting events I haven't had the yeah. pleasure of covering. What what is the the sporting event that you look forward to with our teams here like if you're like oh I just wish the Preds could do this right. or the Titans could do this and then I want to be there uh, you know what <clears throat> you're supposed to be objective right you're not supposed to root for the teams you cover but I mean who couldn't get caught up in what the Preds well, did sure. two years ago yeah that was so much fun and, and the thing about it is they were playing Pittsburgh the team that I used to cover <laughs> yeah, I remember and all my friends were trash yeah, talking me like you know stick to music Nashville doesn't know anything about <laughs> hockey I really wanted the Predators to win that series wow. I'm not going to lie it just would have been fun for the city yeah and you know you cover a team you get to know the guys mm -hmm. and they're a great group of guys in that locker room you know they're, they're they really are the, the the preds players and to be able to kind of you know take pictures at the parade and send them back to pittsburgh and be like there see we yeah. did it you're not so bad yourselves so that was probably it and like i said the 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 experience covering syracuse in the final four and uh the preds stanley cup run from because you know you were there yeah what it, was, it did for the city, it was, it was amazing. amazing. And I kept thinking, I can't, I can't imagine what the city is going to do if we win this. Right. Like, what is that party and the parade going to look like? I know. It, it was. Amazing. I mean, and it I was, think it will happen. I, I think it will too. And 
You're right, and it, and it really put Nashville on the map mm -hmm. because we talk about Nashville being a city on the rise, right. and we're doing a whole series on it. I think that's what really got it going. You know, I mean, it was on the rise before then, but yeah. man, everybody got to see Every, on a yeah. nightly basis on national TV what and a great a, city it is. On a we Wednesday live night, we throw right. one heck of a party <laughs> yeah, for like, a hockey yeah. game. It's so funny because, you know, <laughs> I'll be out on a, on a random night and, you know, you run into a lot of people from out of town and they'll say, is it like this every night? I'm like, yeah, yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah, maybe scaled down a little bit. I'm, I just tell them all the time, welcome to Nashville. <laughs> so, yeah, it would have been great to see the Preds uh, win the Cup. I, I really want to see that happen. And, of course, I'd love to see the Titans win a Super Bowl because for a number of reasons. You know, this the, the Titans fans in this town are very passionate. Yes, they are. And, you know, they want the best for their team, and they came so close in uh, 1999. I would love to see that as well. So, yeah, I mean, you know, like I said, I'm not. you're supposed to be objective. But, you know, I've been here long enough that I really would love to see. And one of the coolest things that happened since I've been here was watching Vanderbilt win the national championship in baseball and what it did for the city. Mm -hmm. Because there are people that never even set foot on the Vanderbilt right. campus. But then you want to be But part they of felt the like, you know what, this is our championship. This is a yeah. Nashville championship. So, yeah, this is a... This place has it all, so we just got to get the sports teams to bring home some hardware, and we can really have a good party. You've mentioned it, and you'll times, be like, there. I will be there, front and center. <laughs> you better believe it. I just found out today that I'm going to be uh, outfield anchoring with you guys for the NFL draft. So, boom, that's going to be fun. Yeah, looking forward to the draft coming up. That's going to be a lot it's of fun. Be big. It is. It's going to be big, and it, that's huge for uh, Nashville to get that. Kudos to the Tennessee Titans and Amy Adams Strunk for being so yeah. instrumental in bringing that here, and that's going to do a lot. For, I think that's going to do a lot. Kind of what the Stanley Cup final mm -hmm. did. It's going to do a lot for the city, so we're all looking forward to that. It's going to be a lot of work, but a lot of fun. It is going to be a lot of work. i got to hone up on some info. I'll don't be worry, don't worry. You you're, you're going you're gonna, you're gonna to know who the top five safeties <laughs> available are, the linebackers, <laughs> the, the, in, yeah, the centers, the guards. We're going to get you all all set up. You'll be, you'll be good to go. Okay. That's what he says. <laughs> you have mentioned a couple of times, like, as a sports person, you're not supposed to do this. So I know right. the news rules, but what are the, like, sports reporter rules um don't cheer on the sideline right right don't cheer in the press box um don't ask you know players for autographs when you're mm -hmm. there covering them um that's about it yeah really you know I don't know don't don't, don't you know the, the the pr staff would prefer you not ask players for their personal cell numbers or stuff like that right. but if you get a good rapport with an athlete sure. and they decide to give it to it to you then you know by all means there you go but yeah there's little written and unwritten rules but those yeah. are, those are two big ones you know don't Basically, you're there to work. You're not there mm -hmm. to be a fan. Yeah. And so a lot of people don't understand that, and understandably so. Mm -hmm. You know, because I'd be in Pittsburgh, and people would call me up. They'd be like, hey, where are you at? Oh, I'm at the game. Well, where are you? In the press box. Oh, can I come up? <laughs> no, you no. can't. Why not? Because you need a credential. <laughs> well, just give me one. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work that way. I'm really doing I was, a job here. I was dating someone at the time, and I couldn't get through to her. I was like, well, we want to come up and hang out in the press. I'm like, no, first of all, no, you don't. <laughs> Because it's so quiet. Yeah, we're not cheering. Second of all, you can't. And she, she, we actually got a legit argument over this. <laughs> Again, that's see, probably that's so why cool I'm not dating me. her anymore. Well, exactly there are a number of reasons. <laughs> Maybe most, more most, mostly my break. reasons. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I know you see some of these players when you're out and about in Nashville. Yeah. So is it more like, okay, we're off the clock. I can, you know, chat it up with you, or do you just kind of like? It it's depends. Their world. It's my world. It's de it depends. Like when I was in Buffalo. Um, it was a lot different time back then. It was the late 90s, and, you know, the world was a lot different. And mm. so, you know, I, I, had a, I, had a, I had a good time hanging out with some of the Buffalo Bills. Um, Pittsburgh was kind of back and forth. There were a couple players that I was, I was really chummy with. Here, there's one Tennessee Titans player that I see out a lot. I'm not going to give his name. No <laughs> names, please. And he, he gets so upset whenever he sees me because, because he just looks at me like, what are you doing here? I'm like, the same thing you're doing you're here. here. I'm hanging out. Just relax, man. I'm not, you know. <laughs> he thinks you're coming out. Right, to right. Exactly. That's what pocket. he said. He said yeah. because he was, I was chatting up another player and he came in. He's like, he said to the one player, he's like, what are you doing talking to him? He's a reporter. I'm like, relax. <laughs> We're off the clock. So it depends. It depends on who it is. But I, I, I give them their space. Yeah. You know what I mean? Let them do their thing. Have fun. You know, because I, I want to have fun. I want to sure. be able to enjoy myself. So, um, you know, it's just now that we're in the social media world oh. and camera phones and this and that, and, you know, you just you don't want to. You don't want to get caught up in any of that. But in the 90s and the early 2000s, it's a different, different story. story. That's all. That's all. That's all I have to say. <laughs>
about that. Okay. <laughs> well, we do have to take a commercial break, so okay. we're going to do that, come back with me. Is Taylor your... telling you to go to break? Taylor, we're not going to take a break. <laughs> the whole hour. Yeah, we're just going to talk. No, we I'm probably kidding. could, I think. <laughs> I think we probably No, could. no, Taylor needs us to go to break. <laughs> okay, we're going to go to break. We're going back with more of your questions. If you have something to ask John, give us a call right now, 615-737-PLUS. We're coming right back. This is a Storm 5 weather update. For weather on the go, download the Storm Shield app. Cold front coming through the area this afternoon kicked up some showers and storms, mainly for folks south and southeast of Nashville. And some of those storms had some hail with them this afternoon, left a coating on the front lawn and back lawn for some folks. Thankfully, all of that activity, it's on its way out the door. Now, cloud cover will be stubborn to clear overnight tonight, but it will gradually get there. By daybreak tomorrow, crisp, cool conditions behind this front. You'll wake up in the upper 30s Tuesday morning. Sunshine gets us into the upper 50s Tuesday afternoon, and that is the coolest day for the rest of this work week, solid warming trend. Here's a look at current conditions right here in Nashville. You see how that cool air continues to pour in out of the north. Overnight tonight, we do bottom out at 39, so a solid drop from the mid to upper 60s we saw Monday. Tuesday will be just a touch cooler as you head into the afternoon hours, in part because of that cold front, reinforcing a cool, breezy air mass in place. That warming trend, it gets underway as early as we hey, all. Hey, how you doing? Wanted to come by and see how it's going. The insurance finally came and paid on our car thanks to you, Mr. Blair Durham. Well, good. Now we can focus on your injury claim. You're yes, welcome, thanks. big guy. For the last 40 years, I have gotten injured people the money they need from insurance companies. Call Bart Durham Injury Law at 1-800-844-1712. I'm Bart Durham, a personal injury lawyer, and I'd be proud to be your lawyer. Welcome back to Beyond the News, and we should say Beyond the Sports now, because ah. JB is our guest tonight. John Burton, thank you for being here once again. It's great to be here, Carrie. Uh, you know, I've been meaning to get on this show for a while. <laughs> of course I really you have. have. It's just, you know, scheduling we did ask and you back and forth. Yeah, and but there were some scheduling busy. conflicts, yes. but I'm here. On your day. Anything off. for you. Thank you. I appreciate it. So it means it's your chance to call in, ask JB some questions about his own life, how he got into this crazy business, what he did before this business. Sure. I think you might be a little bit shocked. Have you <laughs> talked much about this? You know, if people bring it up, sure. Okay. I mean, you know, I, I, I posted a lot of stuff on social. Uh, last week, I posted a picture of myself from my college uh, TV days. Yes, when I had the so fade good. and the cheesy mustache. I was trying to look like Eddie Murphy. I love you know it. what I mean? Yeah, because I mean, you did in your own way. Right, exactly. Yeah. So I, I had the mustache and the fade and the little skinny suit. I was real skinny back then. Uh, there it is. Look at that. Look how look cute at that you guy. are. And I you, look still, like, you still got those dimples. I look though. like I came off this, the, you know, <laughs> an, an, an extra in the Color Me Bad video. You know, look at that. Look at that suit. So that was your college days. Yeah, Plattsburgh State Television at Plattsburgh State, New York. And um, our hockey team was really good, one of the best teams in Division Three. And so we would broadcast the games. Yeah. Um, and I believe we did them. Did we do them live or did we do them uh, tape delay? Either way. I was the guy between periods interviewing the players, and it was a lot of fun. 
I, I enjoyed start. it. Yeah, and I mean, you know, you learn how to kind of oh, ad lib some questions. Yes. You have to pay attention to the game, mm -hmm. know what questions to ask, and stuff like that. So it was a lot of fun. The guys were great, and they won the championship that year. And I'm just saying. Bringing some good luck. I don't know about that, but I tell you what, it was a lot of fun. And Bob Emery, uh, the longtime uh, coach at Plattsburgh State Hockey, he was there for over 30 years. He just retired. So oh, wow. He's probably not watching this, but Coach, if you are, congratulations on your retirement. That's awesome. Let's go to the lines. We have Wayne on the line. Hi, Wayne. What's up, Wayne? Good, good evening. Thank good. you for the time. Sure. Go uh, ahead. I just want to say what a terrific job both of y'all are doing. Oh, thank I you. mean, it's uh, TV worth watching. Oh, <laughs> you're very and, kind. And the question I want to ask Mr. Burton, mm -hmm. you seem like you're so enthusiastic about reporting the sports. How much time do you spend researching? And it's kind of like, best way to explain it, it's like the lady with the weather. Mm -hmm. She has all this research but she only has three minutes to yeah. record it yeah yeah how in the world do you do it and i don't know wayne <laughs> <laughs> i don't know <laughs> i mean there you know you on like any given day own, oh go ahead yeah you know, would you like to have like more time and i know every once in a while y'all have like a 30 minute extra right uh, i think i encourage the station to promote that because, mm -hmm. you know, what can you report in three minutes? And it's not fair to y'all to have three minutes after spending all that time researching. Do you agree? Uh, in a word, yes. But, you know, <laughs> I, I do understand. That. Wayne, I, I appreciate you saying that because, you know, that's, that's what, you know, when you're doing local TV mm -hmm. affiliate sports, which I've done my whole career and been blessed to do, that's been the number one battle, right? Yeah. You know, more you're time. We need more time. time. We need more time. And certain times of the year, Man, you know, especially like in the fall when all the sports are meshing together, right? Sure. You got college football, which is big here. You got the NFL with the Titans, and you know you've got, um, you know, hockey starting mm -hmm. and, and college basketball starting, and there's just there's just not enough time. And and and, and sometimes, you know, you get a lot of people that will call or email and say, hey, you know what, you didn't cover such and such right. and such. I'm really disappointed. And you try to explain to them, I only have so much time. And that's when it becomes difficult, Gary, yes. right? You yes. have to kind of prioritize, all right, this, 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 and this, we and have to get on. I can do. And everything else, we'll try to get it on. Yeah. So, but fortunately, as Wayne said, we do have our, our 30 minute Sunday night show, uh, the Electric Power Company Sunday Sports Central, which I co host with Steve Lehman, which is a blast because it allows us to be creative. And it really, I'm really thankful to News Channel 5 to, to allow us to have that platform every the Sunday yeah. all year round because a lot of people just do it seasonally, mm -hmm. right? They allow us to do that every Sunday, and it's an opportunity for the station to showcase their, their sports talent. And like I said, we can have more time to uh, talk about stories and come up with good ideas for stories and be creative. And uh, you know, working with Steve Lehman on that show is, is amazing because his mind works so creatively. Mm -hmm. He comes up with these cool ideas every week for the show, even when there's not a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> you know, We still fill a 30 minute show and it's still compelling mm -hmm. and it's still fun. And so, um, you know, he's kind of the creative force behind the show. I just kind of show up and say, all right, man, what are we doing? What do you need me to do? Um, but yeah, to be able to at least once a week have that kind yeah. of extended time, that sports extra time is, is a blessing. So whatever we can't get to during the week, we try to put on that show. Good. But yeah, we're always, and we'll, you know that but we always want more time. Rory and I would <laughs> love to give you more time on Friday nights in the fall for football. <laughs> That's right. That's right. See, we do we do the we do the high school football show on Friday nights, and you know, it, it's so funny when you guys toss to me and say, "Hey, big night of high school football!" And you got the big smiles on your faces, knowing that your weekend's hey, starting a little bit early. Hey, it's all home. good though. But it's yes. that that shows a lot of fun, you know, yes. because we're able to combine some of the high school football highlights with the news of the day, and uh, it's always good to get a little ex extended time. So. You know, it's, it's the fight we fight in local yeah. TV affiliate sports. But here, man, you know, we're allowed to do a lot of cool stuff, mm -hmm. so no complaints here. And we're all kind of duking it. I mean, I guess news gets the, the you know, the, the widest or the biggest piece of the sure, pie. Sure, of course. But weather wants more time. Sports wants more time. Right. We're like, no, no, we got the biggest story. No, we've got the biggest <laughs> story. But it, it is a constant fight in the newsroom. And you know what? The time. people that run news departments, they love that. They love it yes. when, when they come Your up passion. to them and say, hey, I've got some stuff that we need to yeah. get on the air. So we try to do that as much <gasps> as possible. Speaking of which. Yes. You know what I'm going to ask you, don't you? I don't. The story that I've been so excited about that you got the big exclusive oh. on. 
Christian Abercrombie. Oh, man. Uh, we talked you. about this for weeks. Yeah, for those that don't know, Christian Abercrombie was a Tennessee State football player that was critically injured mm -hmm. last year in the Vanderbilt game. Um, he suffered a serious brain injury, um, had to undergo emergency yeah. sur surgery. It was touch and go for a while, but a couple weeks ago, I was able to drive to Atlanta along with uh, our producer, Brian McKeegan, and uh, we sat the family down, Christian, his mom, and his dad. Christian's doing great. He's on the road to recovery. He wants to play again, and uh, we were the first uh, station in Nashville to get a, an exclusive interview yeah. with Christian and his family, and I'm telling you, I, uh, I've been able to do a lot of cool stories. That ranks right up there because this, you saw yes. how positive the family is and how thankful they are that he's still around. And I was able to get a oh, picture with it. Christian, and that that was a that was a fun day. You know, we, we drove up to Atlanta and did the interview and came back, came back the same day and got it on the air the next day. Got right? it on the day, got it on the air the next day, and then we did the extended form yeah. that Sunday on the Sports uh, Sunday Show. So uh, that was. That I'm was so an amazing day. It. it was a it was it was an emotional day for me because it was a story that I wanted to do. And yeah. folks, this one right here is the one that said, <laughs> "Hey, are you going to get this? Interview? You got to get, get this, this interview. I mean, yeah. you're the one. Seriously, you're the one that inspired me to to put the extra time in. And it, it took a while to get. I'm sure. Yeah, but, I'm glad you, know, you did. I didn't want to let you down, Carrie. <laughs> you did not. Because you know, I was like, <laughs> okay, let's watch this. Let's watch this. You know, I was just so inspired from day. One yeah. when his parents, particularly his mother, went in front of the cameras, and yeah. it really was day one of this injury. And she said, "No, he's going to live, mm -hmm. and he's going to walk again, and he's going to talk again." And the doctors were like, "We just don't know." Yep. We, you know, it was, they it were, was touch and go. You could tell they really did not have a lot of hope. His yeah. mom, though, no, no, she's like, "We serve a mightiful God, and this is going to happen." Stacy Abercrombie, Christian's mom, is one of the most positive, God-fearing people I've met. Um, Christian's father, Derek Abercrombie, a great man. Um, they just said, you know what? We are going to kind of deal with this yeah. for about 15 minutes. And after that, it's all positive thoughts. It's all about, it's not about us anymore. It's about Christian. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he just posted a, a picture today on his Instagram site where he says, hey, I'm going to play again. And uh, it was it was one of the most satisfying best stories that I ever had the pleasure of being a part of and they were great and they were so welcoming and accommodating and uh, to be able to go into their home and have them relive yeah. what they went through with their son and have Christian relive what he went through um, but they're so positive and yeah. they're so looking forward to the future and I told Christian I said you know if you play football again someday I'm going to be right there in the front row I don't care where it is yeah I'll be there That's so yeah amazing. I was I was very happy and pleased and uh, to do that story, and I got to thank you for giving me the inspiration to really well, I think get that after. We it. all need to hear those stories of hope and yeah. miracles. I mean, miracles do happen, and that, that was that was, was a miracle. pretty much a miracle yeah. right there. So. Okay, I want to I want to take a giant U turn here. <laughs> <laughs> Bring go from the story of hope and miracles yeah. to your own playing days. You are a sports guy. Yeah, rugby yes. was your sport. I played for 19 years. That's amazing. I mean, this, rugby is not a, a sport that we hear about a lot, especially right. here. Right. Uh, how did you get into rugby? Well, I was an ex-high school football player yeah. and then uh, wasn't highly recruited because I wasn't very good. <laughs> uh, but when I got to, when I transferred to Plattsburgh State, I went to junior college first. I got a two-year degree and I said, you know what, this college thing is kind of fun. I think I'm going to keep going. So when I transferred to Plattsburgh State, I, I found out they had a rugby team, like a club rugby team. It wasn't, it was intercollegiate club, not sure. intercollegiate. I said, sounds like it might be kind of fun. Check it out. And I fell in love with the sport immediately. So I played my last two years of college. And then every city I lived in, I played for the local men's club. Mm -hmm. Like I played for the Syracuse Chargers. I played for the Buffalo Old Boys. And then I played for uh, Pittsburgh, which was Pitt City. Um, and I ended up playing for 19 years. I mean, it's a pretty rough sport. Yeah, it's not that bad. I mean, there's, you know. <laughs> you, but, you show up with a few but, shiners or, you know, a nose well, out of whack or what? It was funny because I'm working in Syracuse <laughs> and, my, and I was the weekend guy. And, and my Monday through Friday guy, Dan Hoard, great guy. He's actually the uh, uh, radio play-by-play -play voice of the Cincinnati Bengals now. And one of my mentors in the business. And he, every day, he'd be like, are you crazy? What are you doing? What happens if you get hurt? <laughs> And you know me, I'm in You're my like, early fine. 20s. I'm not going to get hurt. Are you crazy? So I go up to this big tournament in uh, Lake Placid, oh, no. New York. First time I get the ball. I got the weekend off. I got the week off after that. It's going to be the greatest vacation ever. Playing a, oh, ten, no. playing a game 10 o'clock in the morning. I get the ball. I juke a couple of guys. I get tackled. Broke my ankle. Oh. So I had a week off after I got home. But then... That Sunday, I had to go to work. Yeah. 
And so I'm hobbling around, and lo and behold, my producer was off. No interns that day. You were shooting I'm, your own stuff I'm, on crutches. I'm running around, editing, trying to get the show on. I got on the set, and I was like, sweat was pouring off of me because I was running around yeah. so much. So I go to video, and my news anchor, Chris Lawrence, great guy, he's like dabbing me with a tissue while I'm doing Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this was after I said, I'm not going to get hurt. hurt. But, you know, when you're young, you just think you're Superman and yep. you're 10 feet tall and bulletproof. But uh, I kept playing. I mean, there were days, there were mornings. Like I used to go in, put in the 6 o'clock show for sports, write it, and have my producer come in and just kind of fill in the blanks. I'd go play a rugby game, <laughs> go home, take a shower, come back about, eh, about 5.45, Slide and I would do in. the sports. Yeah. Slide in, do the sports. I was I was a maniac. <laughs> now, but, is there a rugby team here? Uh, there is. Yeah, there's Nashville Rugby Club, and I, um, I haven't been able to reach out to them because I was thinking about maybe just coming out and maybe helping coaching. But sure. I got so much going on right now. Uh, but they do a great tournament uh, every spring. It's called Nash Bash, oh, and it's cool. great. And yeah, they get teams from uh, all over the country, men's and women's teams from all over the country to come in, uh, which is a lot of fun. But yeah, I just I fell in love with the sport, and I just had that athlete's mentality and it helped me kind of exercise some demons sure. from when I played in high school mm -hmm. and I and I I think I left a lot on the table when I played in high school and this helped me kind of exercise those demons but it was I a like lot of that. fun yeah it's just you haven't lived till you've been at the bottom you know been at the bottom of a scrum with like <laughs> 29 scrum. other guys on you no, I guess not. Yeah. <laughs> don't play too. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend no, that for you, Carrie. Saying, no, I don't think, I don't think I'm going to do that. <laughs> I'm going to go on living without doing that. <laughs> yeah. But I, I met some incredible people, and I got to travel all over the country for tournaments and stuff. And um, I don't know, man. It just it just got in my blood, you know. And I took pride as one of the few African yeah. Americans in this country that that played that sport and played for a long time. You know, a lot, a lot of guys were in and out, but I I, I stuck with it because I wanted. For whatever reason, I just wanted to be good at club rugby, so I just kept playing, you know? <laughs> I can see it in your eyes. It gets your intensity. Yeah, oh, your man. It's, it's, it's the ultimate challenge. <laughs> like it. it really is, because you have to be physically strong. Mm -hmm. You have to be fast. You have to be quick. But the endurance you have to have to play, yeah. because you don't just run a play and then you go back to the huddle. It's mm -hmm. continuous. You keep playing. And so it, it, it helped me get in and stay in pretty good shape. And it just uh, made some incredible friendships along the way that I am still blessed to have now. And it was, it was a great. I wouldn't trade it for anything. Cool. We have to take another quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk about John Burton, the wrestler. <laughs> the stories just keep getting better. So stay with us. We'd love to hear from you, too. Go ahead and give us a call during the break. We're coming right back. <laughs> Same time next week? Well, of course. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free tips to help you save, go to Feed the Pig. It's a big responsibility. Oh, it's huge. I know, it's huge. And the salary. Oh my god, yes. Right? I mean, like, I was literally, I was about to move in with my parents, and <laughs> right before, the, yeah, so this saved me. I, I really believe in you, you know? Thank you. It's nice to hear that from someone. <laughs> These are cool. Uh, did you, um, what did you?
Thank you for joining us on this fun Monday night. Thanks to my guests going beyond the sports or beyond the news with John Burton tonight. Whatever. Whatever. Yeah. We'll just kind of mix it a little, yeah. a little bit. 615-737-PLUS is the number to call if you want to ask the questions. In the meantime, I'm having a lot of fun asking the questions. And I promise. Now, have you been a guest on this show, Carrie? You can't be the guest <laughs> and the host. Yeah, that's what you should do. You should interview yourself one night. That would be incredible. <laughs> Incredibly freaky. Yeah. <laughs> like, is she talking? Just to switch her? chairs. Is she answering the questions yeah, right. and answering them. That's weird. I would watch. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I want to talk about John Burton, the wrestler. Oh, this my is goodness. a real thing. Yeah. We have pictures of it. <laughs> when did this happen, and, and why did it happen? Oh well, you know, right place at the right time. Maybe wrong place at the wrong time. I don't know. <laughs> um. John, look at you. Yeah. <laughs> That was in West Newton, Pennsylvania. That's my manager, Dr. Feelbad. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> great guy. Uh, he was also the uh, promoter of the shows. So I've been a wrestling fan my whole life, right? Yes. I've been a wrestling fan since I was 10, right? My first wrestling hero was a guy by the name of Tony Atlas, this big, jacked up black dude. He was a bodybuilder, Mr. USA. He was, you know, he was that dude. And I was like, I want to be like him when I grow up. And he's the guy that actually, you know, uh, encouraged me to, to, to work out and that kind of stuff. So I've been a wrestling fan my whole life, right? I was a Hulkamaniac in the 80s yeah. when Hulk Hogan and, and the business got big. And then later on when Stone Cold Steve Austin, the Attitude Era and The Rock started going, mm -hmm. um, you know, I became a big fan again. And then I was away from it for a little while. And then when John Cena got popular, I became a big John Cena fan and Randy Orton and Undertaker and all that kind of stuff. So one night I'm in Pittsburgh. Okay. I'm out at... Uh, so were, my, you, were you doing sports at this time? Yeah, I'm doing okay. sports in Pittsburgh. And I was out one night, and I had a John Cena t-shirt on. And this good-looking dude comes up to me. He's all tatted up. And I'm like, oh, God, what's, what's this? <laughs> He's like, hey, man, so you got a John Cena t-shirt on. I'm like, yeah. He goes, you're a wrestling fan? I'm like, yeah. He goes, well, I'm a pro wrestler. And my dad owns a company just north of Pittsburgh in Butler, Pennsylvania. I'm like, he goes, you're the guy from you know Channel 4 News, right? I said, yeah. You're a sports guy. I said, yeah. He said, listen, we run shows every month in Butler. We'd love for you to come up and be a guest ring announcer. Oh, I said, cool. done. So they run on Fridays, and I was, you know, I took that Friday off, and I drove up to Butler, and I met, you know, um, actually the, the, the guy that went up to me is, if you're a wrestling fan, you know who he is. His name's Corey Graves. He's the, one of the main announcers on WWE right now. Oh, wow. Yeah, on Monday Night Raw and Tuesday Night SmackDown. So... She's looking at me, folks, like, what is he talking about? <laughs> you don't follow wrestling, do you, Carrie? All right, All right. No. anyway, so That's I'll... That's a good story. Well, thanks. I'm listening. I, I will continue. So <laughs> I met Corey's dad. I met his whole family, and I did the guest ring announcing thing. It was a lot of fun. Just a local independent show. You know, yeah. no big names, but, you know, good wrestlers from around the area sure. and I got to be behind the scenes and kind of see how the sausage is made for a wrestling show and it was fascinating I loved it you got so the then bug. so then Corey's dad comes up to me and he says listen and there was a guy I know um, Bubba Snyder who was a morning DJ in Pittsburgh still is he's a trained wrestler in fact he was a former champion at one of the local uh, companies in Pittsburgh and he's a bad guy he said I want to do a match I want to train you to be a wrestler and I want to put you in a match with Bubba. And we're going to do it in Monroeville, where you live, and you're going to win. I said, <laughs> like, I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> so Corey and his dad trained me. Mm -hmm. And it was supposed to be a one-time thing. Okay. So we had, we, had, we had the match all mapped out. We were good to go, no problems. Three days before the match, Bubba sends me a text. He's like, I have to go in for emergency oh, throat no. surgery. You're a DJ, so yeah. You gotta, yeah. I said, I can't do the match. I'm like, what Aww. are we going to do? So we put our heads together. We ended up, I, I had a match with another guy, my buddy, who's actually one of my best friends, my buddy Aaron, who was uh, a bad guy wrestler at the time. And so we kind of milked the storyline to where... I'm representing Bubba because Bubba, if you're beneath him, you, you know, you don't, he doesn't need to wrestle you, so I'm taking his place. So we had the match. Did you still get to and win? And I won. Aha. Uh -huh. And okay. the place went nuts. Yay! And we had a blast. And we had great chemistry in the ring, him and I, because we're about the same size. So I thought, you know what? Hey, I did it. I can say that's off my bucket list. Right. I worked a wrestling match. Crowd went great. Crowd was great. And so, but what happened was, Local promoters started calling me and emailing me, oh. saying, "Hey, we want to use you because 
you know, we thought you did a pretty good job. We heard about it. So it, it, it started to become some buzz. So I go to this company in McKeesport, Pennsylvania, and I ended up starting to wrestle there. And I wrestled as myself, John okay. Burton, but I was what's called in the industry a baby face or a good guy, okay? So my whole gimmick, as we say in the business, you know, I'm local sports celebrity, giving mm -hmm. wrestling a try. I right. love the people of Pittsburgh with the, with the fans of Pittsburgh behind me, I can't lose. And my first feud was with my buddy Aaron, who wrestled by the name of Ashton Amherst. Right. And so he was like, you don't belong here. This right. We had this whole thing, and we went back and forth. It was, and I ended up winning a mid-card title there. So, like, how long did this go on? I did it steadily for about three and a half years. Oh, wow. So I ended up working for another company at the same time out in West Newton, Pennsylvania. And I wrestled. It was, it was a total freak thing. I was actually going with my two buddies who were on the card that night. I was just along for the ride. And then my buddy Ryan calls me up and he says, hey, do you have your gear? I was like, yeah, I just brought it just in case. He said, can you work a match tonight? I'm like, yeah, I guess. He's like, yeah, we had somebody call off sick. So I ended up working a match with another guy, this dude, Teddy Fine, great guy from Philadelphia. And the promoter says, you're the heel tonight because Teddy's one of our biggest baby faces. You have to be a bad guy. Oh, no. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was phenomenal. So you like being I a got, bad guy? I love being a bad guy wrestler. Oh, so I came out there and I'm just as cocky Which as Which is not whatever. your personality and, at all. Well, here's the thing. The best wrestling characters are yourself, but You're with the volume you. turned way up. Okay. So the John Burton babyface wrestling character, you know, it's an extension of what I'd like yes. to be. I'd really like yes. to be there for everybody and, and yes. take pictures with all the kids and sign all right. the autographs. The bad guy, John Burton, wrestler. You know, I'm bitter, I'm angry, I'm like, I'm from New York, you people from Pittsburgh are all beneath me, you guys all stink. And I mean, I had that crowd hating me. I'll tell you a quick story. We did a show the week after the Pittsburgh Steelers lost to the Green Bay Packers in oh. the Super Bowl, a game that I covered. So I come out and I grab the mic and I said, you, you, I don't, you remember that song by Wiz Khalifa, Black and Yellow? No. All right, it was a rap song called Black and Yellow, and the Steelers kind of adopted it because their colors are black and yellow, black and gold. Mm -hmm. And the Green Bay Packers are green and, green and gold, but green and yellow. So I grab the mic and I go, you know what it is, green and yellow, green and yellow. <laughs> Just as I predicted, your Pittsburgh Steelers choked in the Super Bowl. They are oh. booing me. And so I end up wrestling this kid, Strider, who was one of the biggest baby faces um, in the area, right? He, he, he was a great kid, ex-rugby player like myself, we're about the same size, and the crowd loved him. Like, they just loved him. He came out, people went nuts. He was what we call in the business over with the crowd, and they hated me. <laughs> so I wrestled him in a match, and I went, not only do I win, I cheated to win, and oh. I'm telling you, I thought they were going to jump the rails. <gasps> I, you got there the back door. I cheated. I cheated to beat him, and I'm just being cocky. I'm just bringing it. Come on, bring it. And people are like, <laughs> little kids are like, <laughs> being a bad guy wrestler I am is so, glad so I got this story. much fun because you control the match as a bad uh -huh. guy. Because you don't, you know, when you're a good guy, you have to do what's called taking the heat, right? Yeah. The bad guy's got to beat on you for a while, then you make your comeback, and then however the match goes, it goes. When you're the bad guy. I can get you in the corner, I can hit you with a couple of things, and I can go, you know, egg on the crowd for a little bit, and I can go back to beating I can do whatever I want. I'm in complete control of the match. Hmm. And I love getting on the mic and talking. And, I am just, know. like, envisioning this yeah. like fundraiser we could do with JB <laughs> back in the wrestling ring, being the bad guy. Oh, I've got big plans. So, I've got big plans. So I find out that I'm coming to News Channel yeah. 5, right? And I think I told you this story before. Sandy, our, our news director... Yeah. Uh, she types up the inner office memo saying, hey, we're pleased to announce Jonathan Burton is coming to News Channel 5 to be our new sports guy. And, you know, she lists a couple things about me. He likes to do this and that. And he even spent time as a professional wrestler with an exclamation point. She loved it. She loves it. She told me about it on my interview <laughs> that our sports guy was a wrestler she once. She loved it, right? So um, Jennifer Reyes, who used to be a reporter yes. here at News Channel 5, love her to death. Um, we were hanging out one time, and she said, you know, for the longest time, we thought that you were a professional wrestler that was giving the whole sports casting thing a try. I said, no, 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 no that's, <laughs> that's not exactly not it. how it went. But <laughs> long story short, I know it's kind of a long-winded story, but I 
It was amazing. It was a bucket list thing for me, and I, a lot like rugby, yeah. I made some incredible friends I that I still have today. And to see my friend, who I'm really tight with, I've had holiday dinners at his house, to see my friend Corey Graves become the star that he's become as a WWE announcer, because he was a wrestler, but he suffered too many concussions, mm. and so WWE said, well, listen, we're shutting you down as a wrestler, but you have an opportunity to be an announcer, and now mm -hmm. he's on national TV twice a week every night. I, I couldn't be prouder for him. So. That's amazing. Yeah. That was a great story. I even <laughs> learned some lingo. It was a little long-winded, but yeah. <laughs> That's okay. That's why we've got a whole hour oh, here, That's right. right? <laughs> All right, Lucy, I know you're on the line. Don't go anywhere. We're going to get to you right after this.